which is the better game? The Binding of Isaac Rebirth or Spelunky the HD Remake? The Binding of Isaac is not necessarily strategy. It is more of a, you're given the items you're given and you just bloody well deal with it. The Binding of Isaac is more of a learning experience. You learn the room layouts, you learn the enemy behaviors, and then you just stick to the patterns you have learned previously. You are lean way the Oh, yes, oh yeah. <laughs> As for Spelunky, on the other hand, you don't just lose 15 minutes of game time. There have been runs where you lose hours of game. I'm the Shelob uh, uh, of this place. Oh, don't mention no. Shelob and Fed of Spiders, actually. We've, she's really when overrated. When you die in Spelunky, it is genuinely your own fault. You suck. You know what? You know what? Fuck this game. Fuck this game. Let's take the bigger picture into the discussion. Let's take the story element of both games. Binding of Isaac wasn't originally thought to be the huge success, the huge game it turned out to be later on. So therefore, a lot of story elements don't necessarily make actually any degree of sense. So there is not really a story per se, but then we would drift off into the discussion, does a game need story, ludonarrative, narrative, disco dance, whatsoever? Big spider. Yeah. Ah, little spiders. On the other hand, Spelunky has a story which very much ties into the gameplay, but it's, you know, rather generic. So maybe don't, let's not take the bigger picture after all. Okay, so if the story doesn't help in deciding which is the better game, maybe aesthetics could. Let us make your life a little more The Binding of Isaac Rebirth surely has a rather unique style to it, because Edmund McMillan obviously has his style he puts into the game, similar to Gish or similar to, to Super Meat Boy beforehand. So it is rather pretty if you like this wacky art style of his. Spelunky, on the other hand, has rather mundane textures. You have earth, you have some jungle greens in between, but they are varied and they are actually quite pretty if you are into the pixel art style, obviously. We will have to draw the full final mega string, which is the better game in terms of gameplay. Yeah, you're bouncy. Look how happy you uh, are. You know, really happy to bounce. Doesn't have like really level design. It has like segment design. Yeah. But it, like this game is more about the experience of playing it and not so much about mastering it. Well, no, it's about mastering. It's about mastering the gameplay more than anything else. Okay. In terms of Isaac Rebirth, the first few minutes of a run always feel incredibly similar. If you have played hundreds of hours of Isaac, you will hate the first five to ten minutes of every run. Because, you know, Isaac takes a while to get rolling, to push the stone over the first initial hill, and then when the item combinations, which are truly unique, there are thousands of them, the stone rolls down the hill and everything is going to be huge jolly old time. But this first initial step is what Spelunky does better. In Spelunky, when you start a new run, even though you always have the same equipment, due to the level being totally unique, Spelunky manages to engage the player more in an earlier time point. But what about the mid-game? The mid-game is where it gets actually interesting, because Isaac, on the one hand, this is the point where you get rolling, this is the point where you decide, do I offer more health to the small devilish beggar, or do I just get on with my life, I don't know, get and deal with Angel or whatever, you know? And in Spelunky, in the mid-game, let's say, around the black market stuff, you usually have most of the things you need. So this is where, in Spelunky, the runs feel similar, because you have a cape, you have a jetpack, or whatever. And in Isaac, this is where the game starts shining. Ah, <sighs> okay. We're not getting anywhere with this, are we? What about the end game, though? In Isaac, you can go for Mega Satan, you can go for the chest, you can go for Satan, you can go for, you know, Lamb. We have quite a lot of choice there. In Splunky, on the other hand, you're actually quite stuck. Because if you miss the Ujedi in the mines, if you miss the Black Market, if you miss any of the several points that would get you into hell, basically you're doomed. You have to fight Olmec, and then it's it for you. So, in Splunky, it can actually happen that Due to not necessarily fault of yours, you're missing one of the many pieces needed for a hell run, and then you're just like, ah, why am I even playing? I'm not even 
able to go to hell now. So in terms of endgame, I think Rebirth is the more expansive game. Speaking of expansive, Rebirth obviously not only has lots of choice in terms of mid and end game, but also has the challenges in the game included. Now Splunky, on the other hand, has the competitive element, you know, it has the daily challenge. And also recently Splunky got an unofficial level editor, which makes use of so many cool elements and basically creates a set piece of things you have to go through. Very challenging stuff, very fun stuff, basically things that are just not possible in a procedurally generated game. But is it fair to include a mod which came afterwards? Hell yeah! Because if you're deciding which is the better game in the current time point, you take the stuff that is available for the game right now. You know, actually, it is quite easy to decide which is the better game, as long as you're deciding for yourself. If you're into platformers, Spelunky will be your first choice. It is fun. Okay, so I want that kid to wake up so he'll eat the caveman. On the other hand, if you're not big into platformers, then Isaac will be the better game for you. Easy choice. In the original Legend of Zelda, yeah. they, they, they just kind of follow you and they're like way harder than the giant dragon that they came yeah. from. You, you cut off the hedge and you're like, oh shit, I should yeah. not have cut off that head. <laughs> okay, I don't want to die, I want to hit him with one of my shots. Just one of them would just be nice. Just one would be nice. Well, one shot. Because, you know, the dungeon crawling, it's unique after the first few minutes. And there is so much stuff for you to do, and even beginners can get an overpowered run and complete parts of the game. While in Spelunky, that's just not possible. You suck. You have to learn it. You're not just suddenly beat Olmec. No, hell no. To sum it up, and to come to a final verdict, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth is the better game if you only take the game into account that is currently available. So. Rebirth is more expansive, has more variety after a certain time point. Once you push the rock over the first hurdle, you got a few items, the run gets interesting, you have loads of challenge, you have loads of optional stuff you can do. It's also fun for beginners to jump into. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth is the better game on its own. However, Spelunky currently got the level editor. Now, it not only has the content, it comes with it, so that the, not just the content, it comes with the game, so the procedure generated and the competitive daily challenge stuff. No, it also has timed elements, puzzles, all the other kinds of fancy shit that blows your mind. Spelunky is amazing, and Spelunky wins. I'm sorry, you die. Ooh. Spaghetti octopus, elephant sidewalk, potato salad ramification. Fish spam my nugget. I don't know. Hamburgers all up in my jism. Lexicon of the tremendous alimony of the wordsmiths von Hausen slaps. Or tissue the fermento. We don't fly in Chitabo. I don't even know what the Commodus is. Remember, if you don't slags, then you'll never be put on a slibbin's trebs nest. <laughs> anyway, please leave a comment telling us why we're sick fucks.